A very good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the fourth edition of the radio talk on orientation for the newly developed class, uh, English textbooks of classes 1, 2 and 3. These textbooks have been developed with the collaborative efforts of SCERT Sikkim and the Education Department, Government of Sikkim, along with Azim Premji University, Bengaluru and UNESCO, MGIEP, that is Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development. These new textbooks have been carefully developed keeping in mind the NCERT learning outcomes, the National Curriculum Framework 2005 and Education for Sustainable Development goals. It's been a real privilege to be a part of the English textbook development team and it is a matter of great pride to share our works with you. Let me introduce myself. I am Karma Tempo and with me is, Rin is Rinchen Zangmo. Hello everyone, I am Rinchen. Welcome to our fourth radio talk. Grab your pens and notebooks to jot down some important points. Make sure you have your textbooks too. We hope to make this session fun and beneficial for all. So please feel free to ask us questions. We will be more than happy to help and will try to clear your doubts. The telephone lines will be open after 12.40 and the numbers are 03592-201171. Before we go on, I think it is important to give you a brief recap of all the radio shows. Can you do us the honors, Karma sir? Sure, Rinchen. In the first talk, our friends Larissa and Dipendra gave us an overview of the new English textbooks. They spoke in detail about the first section called Picture Fun. In the second talk, Roshan and Bunit spoke elaborately on how to work on two more sections, Story Time and I Can Read. Last week, on the third talk, Durga and Suleika made us rejoice with their talk on the sections Recite and Rejoice and Rhyme Time. And today, we'll be looking at how you can work on the remaining two sections, Happy Fingers and Let's Explore. This will close our overview of the seven sections of the new textbooks, namely Picture Fun, Story Time, I Can Read, Recite and Rejoice, Rhyme Time, Happy Fingers and Let's Explore. Happy Fingers and Let's Explore, just the names of this section sounds very interesting and fun for children. Karma, can you tell us what this section contains? You're right, Rinjan. These sections are indeed fun. The Happy Finger section is about creating interesting art and craft work like paper balls, finger puppets, photo frames, pipe gari, thank you cards and lot more. The Let's Explore section is about going for a nature walk, interacting with elders, neighbors, inviting groups of students from higher classes and much more. Sounds very interesting, especially for children from children's points of view. You're right. But do keep in mind that Happy Fingers and Let's Explore are not just about fun and enjoyment, but also a great tool for learning language. The objective is to make the learning process more interactive. Children learn by doing. They get to use a lot of actions and interactive language through conversations. This leads to language development and development of motor skills. On the other hand, Let's Explore takes children outside the walls of the classroom and connects them to the outside world. It leads to meaningful development of language, creates a sense of awareness about surroundings, and also how they can take small steps to contribute to society. There are activities in Let's Explore where children learn about empathy towards animals and also where they learn to share and appreciate cultural diversity. In essence, both these activities are quite wholesome for teaching language. Karma, can you tell us on how the concept of these two sections was conceived? Well, this is very interesting. It's a long story, but let me tell you in brief. The English textbook writing team was divided into groups. We went to all the districts of Sikkim to interact with children and understand their interests and desires. This proved to be very fruitful as we got to know so many things about the children, their condition of the schools, their geographic locations, their food habits, and their varied cultures. We also saw the challenges faced by children and teachers in everyday life. We learned about children's interest, ranging from wanting to be in the army, to be able to drive a truck, 
to be a doctor, artist, traveler, singer. Some even wanted to have superpowers like Spider-Man. Most of the children said that they would love to do something creative and make something with their own hands in the class. Some other prominent interests like their love for birds of different colors also came very strongly. I remember how a few children also talked about a bear coming into their locality. Because of all these reasons, we have a wide range of stories, rhymes and activities on animal-man conflict, birds, our very own local kantur, pipe gari and many more. Children were also interested to see and explore the world around them. And so, the concept of happy fingers and let's explore came into being. In fact, most of the content of our new textbooks have evolved from our tour to different parts of Sikkim. I must say, it was very challenging for us to embed the concept of ESD goals into our primary level textbooks. But when we went to different corners of Sikkim, interacted with children and saw the eagerness to know about the world around them, the concept of Let's Explore was finally born. So now, Rinchen, can you shed some light on the objectives of Happy Fingers and Let's Explore? Sure, Karma Tempo. So, the basic objective of Happy Fingers is to make the teaching of language skills, especially communication skills, more fun and interactive. From the name itself, you can make out that children learn language by doing something, some task using their hands. This means that Happy Fingers also help develop the psychomotor skills of the children. As the teacher, you have to instruct and demonstrate certain art and craft activities by using lots of English for interaction. Children listen and follow. This greatly improves their listening comprehension. Now, Let's Explore aims to create an opportunity for children to go out of the four walls of the classroom and explore and connect to the finer details of the life around them. A child learns best when she is exposed to the world outside. She learns to engage, understands issues and takes small steps to contribute to the society. Let's Explore also helps us reimagine the, we give, the way we give homework to children. As learning happens everywhere and we are always learning, the objective of Let's Explore is to help children learn from the world around them and le learn language in real life situation. A question, Rinjan. A question which often comes to the mind is whether Happy Fingers is more like an art and craft class because of the kind of activities given in the textbook. You talked about how it develops language and also psychomotor skills. Can you elaborate more on this? You see, children in classes 1, 2 and 3 are at an age where maximum language learning takes place. Their mind is always eager to learn when a teacher demonstrates an art or a craft activity and gives instruction in English, the child listens carefully, follows instruction and completes the task. In the process, the child learns new words like cut, fold, paste and in between. This is how their listening comprehension and vocabulary is built in meaningful way. The role of a teacher is paramount. We can understand this better in three parts. Before doing the activity, while doing the activity and after completing the activity. Before doing the activity, you must be well prepared. You must collect the materials beforehand and be well versed with the instruction you have to give to your children. This gives you an idea about what to do and how many periods it would take to complete the activity. While doing the activity, it is important to keep the following things in mind. First, tell children what they are going to do. Describe everything including all the steps of activity in the home language. When you start the activity, use English alongside. Because you have already explained everything in home language, and we also use lots of action, children will automatically understand what you are saying. Here, it is very important to note that your actions and words should go together. For example, when you say, fold the papers into two halves, you must fold the paper and show it to the children. As children complete their task, move from child to child and help them. You should also ask children to help each other out. 
After completing the activity, children can share their experiences and display their art or craft activity in the classroom. We can encourage them to speak a few English words or sentences. Let children make mistake while using English. Our objective is to help children talk about their activity in some broken English with our support. However, make sure that you use a lot of English. That's beautifully ex- beautifully explained, Rinjan. I think this also helps us understand how much English to use for happy fingers. Otherwise, we get so engrossed in the talks that we forget to use English. Right. That's why I think it will help if you can share one detailed example of a happy fingers section. Sure. Imagine that I am in class 3 and have to do the happy fingers section for theme 1 that is from I wish. This activity is given on page 13 of class 3 textbook. I repeat page number 13 of class 3 textbook. In this activity, children have to make a prayer flag. These are commonly seen all around us. First, you will introduce the activity to children and help them warm up to it. You can use the pictures of lungta or a prayer flags and even carry one to class. This will also motivate children to go ahead with the activity and get an idea of what they are going to make. You can say something like, आजु आमी योटा पुरा कलरफुल र ब्यूटीफुल चीज बनाउनु आटेक छ तिमीहरुले देखिराको छ देखिराको हुन्छ यो चीज क्यान यु गेस के बनाउनु आटेक होला है इट इज एक्चुअली भेरी कमन इन आवर नेबरहुड्स एन्ड गुम्पास गुम्पाहरुतिर पुरा देख्छ पाँच वटा कलरको हुन्छ हावाले उडाइराको हुन्छ कति जनाको घरको अगाडि हुन्छ बिल्डिङको टुपामा हुन्छ पुरा हावा आएपछि पुरा हल्लिन्छ फ्ल्यागहरु जस्तो हुन्छ नि इट हैज अ ब्यूटीफुल कलर्स अफ रेड ब्लु Green, yellow, and white. Yes, it is a prayer flag, also commonly known as lungta. Do you know that there are prayers written on lungta? People say that wind will spread the prayers all over. The prayer will go into people's heart. This way, people will become good and kind, and there will be peace everywhere. Prayer flags are wishes for a better world. So, children, let us make a prayer flag for our class. To make a prayer flag, we will need, we will need, I repeat, prayer paper, crayons, strings and glue. Here, dear teacher, please note that you should write the names of the material on the board and point at them alongside. Go through each word again and make children point out the words too. Then you should demonstrate the steps to make the prayer flag. Explain each step in detail. Try to use as much English as you can. Children will get clues from from your action as you demonstrate the different steps. You can give instruction as given in the textbook. Are you ready children? See, I have taken a sheet of paper. On this sheet of paper, I am going to write my wish. You can draw if you like, okay? If you want to write something, I will help you. My wish is, I wish for a beautiful dress for my birthday. After writing my wish, I will color the paper sheet with my favorite color. Now I want you all to do the same. Okay children, are you all ready? Once you have demonstrated the activity, it is the children's turn to do it. Give them the required material in the group. If you don't have enough material for everyone, make them share. Move to each child and see how much help they need. Keep repeating the instructions one by one. After each step, ask children to show what they have done. This will ensure that all children get time to complete their work. You can also ask children to help each other out. After children completes the activity, you have to collect all the sheets and put them together to make the prayer flag. You can say, Okay children, let us see what you have made. Hold up your colored paper sheet. Now let us stick our prayer flag on the string. 
हामी टालुङ है अब यो हामीले जे लेखेको छ यो स्ट्रिङ मा यो धागो मा टाल्नु पर्छ ल फर दैट वी नीड सम ग्लू प्लीज शेयर द ग्लू विथ योर फ्रेंड्स अप्लाई द ग्लू ऑन द टॉप साइड ऑफ द पेपर एंड स्टिक इट ऑन द स्ट्रिंग नाउ आवर प्रेयर फ्लैग इज रेडी लेट अस हैंग इट अप ऑन द वॉल डू यू वांट टू टेल एवरीवन व्हाट यू हैव रिटन और ड्रॉन you can now ask each child to point out their colored papers and share what they have written or drawn let them use their home language while talking through the above example you must have noticed a few important things it is very important to show the material while speaking your actions and words should follow each other This will help children understand what is happening and also learn new English words and phrases. As the teacher, you must speak as much English as possible. Wow, that was wonderful, Rinchen. I feel like making a prayer flag right now. Thank you so much. I hope this detailed example helps you, dear teachers. There might have been so many questions on your mind which are totally clarified now. a major question that is how much english you should use during such activity is also answered the answer is you as a teacher must use a lot of english along with actions and expressions let children slowly use english words and through actions they will also begin to use those english words karma what are the challenges do teachers face maybe we could answer those questions too well Some teachers have expressed concerns regarding the non availability of materials especially for the making of pipe gadi in class 2. What would you suggest? Dear teachers, if you ever feel that you don't have the materials to a particular happy finger activity, do not worry. Improvise. Be a little creative with materials available at your disposal. For example, in the pipe gadi activity, instead of using a pipe to make the wheel, You can always use a thin bamboo called parang in Nepali. If that too is not available, you can ask children to make any other thing related to the themes wheel and wheels and wings. For example, you can ask children to make a simple paper boat or a plane. Whether you modify or change the activity, keep the theme and its objective in mind. That's true, Rinchen. Another question is. How do we ensure the participation of differently able children in the happy fingers activities? What should we do if they find it difficult to follow the instructions? What is our role as a teacher? Many children find it difficult to follow instruction not just those with special needs. You can put children in pairs or groups and you must yourself provide extra help to them too. As I mentioned earlier we should anyway encourage children to help each other we have to ensure that they are not left out and are fully involved what about the safety of the students some materials like scissors or a hammer can be a little tricky to use especially for young children there is one activity in class 3 for the mystery and magic theme where children have to make a rainbow with the use of a glass and a mirror what do you have to say about that Well, in these cases, the activity should be conducted under your full supervision. Help children with these materials. You can also request extra help from your colleagues during such activities, but they are very few and far in between. Okay, Rinchen, the last concern is about T I M E time. Broadly speaking, how many periods should it take to complete each ha- Happy Fingers activity? Now this depends on the activity and the class in which children study. For example, in class 1, children are still strengthening their psychomotor skills. They are given simpler tasks like making simple smileys, paper balls and hats. The instruction are also fewer in number. However, even this activities involves cutting, pasting and drawing. Maybe they might take more than 2 periods. you should plan according to that by classes 2 and 3 the activities include more step they become more complex more tricky materials like glasses and mirrors are used 
the numbers of instructions also increases children have to make rainbows polar bear mask and salad this activities may also take two periods you can take the help of your colleagues and plan a double period for such activity you can also complete the activity during proxy classes thank you rinchen i think that should clarify most doubts in the minds of teachers if you have any more doubts you can always call we will be happy to assist you in any way now it's time to move on to the last section that is let's explore as we have already discussed the main objective of the section is to connect and bring the outside world into the classroom children get to go outside from the four corner classroom and explore the finer details of life around they engage with people outside and begin to understand issues related to their surroundings not just that they also take small steps to contribute to society these are small steps to help children become responsible and global citizens apart from this children also get ample opportunities to practice and experience the real use of language for example there are many activities under let's explore where children are to speak to their elders shopkeepers and neighbors on different topics they learn how to greet them and talk to them politely and respectfully but how will children learn english from elders shopkeepers and neighbors rinjan the interaction outside school may take place in nepali or other local language but the warm up activity and the summing up of the activity will take place inside the classroom you dear teachers must use a lot of english for the warm up and summing up for example if you want children to go home and talk to their neighbors on a particular topic you will have to talk about the question which children need to use you have you can have this conversation using a lot of english from your side you can also help children make questions after children go home and talk to the neighbors using the questions they will come back with their answers orally of course you you have to talk to children about their discussions at home this too should be done using mixed language from your side use familiar words in english do not force the children to speak in english they can respond in a few words or sentences with your help let them use nepali or their home language wow karma sir so this section will not only develop language skill in children but also make them responsible at such a tender age can you explain the language development part in little more detail maybe by using an example from the textbook how can children learn english through such activities sure rinchen let us take examples from the class 1 and 2 english textbook first class 1 the let's explore section of class 1 theme fun and festivals is given on page 111 i repeat the let's explore section of class 1 fun and festivals is given on page 111 In this activity children are supposed to talk to their elders about different festivals they enjoy Before children go home and do the activity you must talk to them about which kind of questions they can ask to their elders You can also talk about elders that children have at home In case a child does not have any elderly family member they can also talk to their parents they can talk to children about you can talk to children about basic norms of interaction like greeting the person you can encourage children to use small phrases like thank you even at home how will you address this person this is an important question to discuss the questions which children ask should be framed in a very simple way for example which festival did you enjoy the most when you were a child which festival do you enjoy these days children may have many questions in their mind talk to them help them frame these in english children may ask why do you like that festival 
Children can then do the activity at home and come back to class after sharing. Sorry, come back to class for sharing. For sharing, you can make a table on the blackboard. Write the names of all students, the people they interviewed, the names of festivals they got, and the reasons for liking these festivals. Talk to children. Again, you use a lot of English. But initially, let children respond in any language. Read what you have written on the blackboard by finger pointing. Encourage children to identify the words and letters. This activity is also a nice way of enabling teach, uh, ch children to learn the language and appreciate cultural diversity. Karma, but how are we supposed to ensure that all children complete the activity at home, especially since child in classes 1, 2 and 3 are so young? That's a very interesting question, Rinjan. My first response is that such homework activities are very interesting and engaging for students. They also don't create unnecessary burden on children. Most of the English learning takes place inside the classroom. The outside experience helps build it and make it more meaningful. I think children will prefer doing such homework rather than boring homework we sometimes give them. There are some other strategies which you can make to make sure everyone completes their activity at home and shares their experiences in class. You can divide the students into groups and have each group share their work every day for 10 to 15 minutes in the English class. This will spread your work over many days and give all children sufficient time to complete their activity, even those who need extra time. When children listen to each other, they feel all the more motivated to complete the tasks. They get the confidence that if their friends can do it, they can also do it. It gives them direction. That is why peer learning is so important. Children who have not yet started their work get motivated. What more do you want as a teacher? You can also make charts of each group or child where you track their progress. Please note, you may have to provide extra help to some children who find the activity difficult to complete alone at home. Talk to them every day and ask them about their progress. Break the activity up for them. For example, you can initially ask them to come with the answer to one question only. Once they come back to you with one answer, you can give them further questions to work on. Don't worry if a few children are slow to catch on. Give them time. This is very important, especially in the initial years of schooling. Karma, since the example you have stated is from class 1, will students be able to answer and share their work in English? No, Rinchen. As we discussed even in the earlier section, Happy Fingers, we must initially not expect children to use English. They may use a lot of Nepali and other languages and very little English. Some may use only actions like nodding their heads or smiling. We can also ask children to scribble or draw as a response. The expectation to use more English increases with each class. Make sure you engage such language use from your side. Let me give another example, this time from class 2, Green World. The Let's Explore section for this theme is given on page 59. I repeat, class 2, page 59, the activity is Nature Walk. Before conducting this activity, it is very important to talk to children about it. Tell them. You are taking them outside and ask them to guess why. Take their responses and finally reveal your objectives. You want them to collect some leaves from the nature walk, but you also want them to carefully look at everything they see. They have to come back to class with some leaves for an activity and also tell you what they saw. 
Since you are taking children outside the safety of the classroom, you must dis discuss all the do's and don'ts of the nature walk. Rinchen, can you be kind enough to read out the do's and don'ts? Sure. For example, you can ask children to carry your own water bottles, carry your own pencils and notebook, carry raincoats, umbrellas, maintain silence and observe nature, do not pluck any flowers, do not eat wild berries or fruits or anything else you find, do not throw stones or objects at each other or animals, and most importantly, do not litter. Thank you, Rinjan. After children have collected the leaves and got sufficient time to observe the surroundings, you can come back to class and ask children what they have observed. You can put together all the leaves. Ask children if they enjoyed the walk. You can then carry on with the questions given in the textbook. Karma, how far should we take children for this nature walk and do we need to take permission from parents for such activities? Rinchen, it is our duty as teachers to inform parents in advance. Whenever we are planning such an activity where children have to go outside the school campus, we should send a note to parents. As teachers, we should also have the power to conven convince parents about the importance of the activity because sometimes a few parents raise doubts or concerns. They may even find such activities unnecessary, especially for teaching English. But be kind and explain patiently. Explain to them that such activities are wholesome learning experiences for children and not just for teaching English, but also for skills of mathematics and EVS. One thing is certain. As children are very young, we must not take them too far. We must make use uses of people and places close to the school, which can be reached after a few minutes of walking. Since the activity is a nature walk, how can it be performed in urban areas where there is a lot of traffic and not enough space to walk? Well, it is not necessary to go to a very jungle-like area for nature walks. It can also be done in a neighboring garden or even within the school campus. Oh, and one more thing, Rinjan. While conducting such activities, we must make sure that the children do not get disturbed by other children and they should also not disturb other classes which may be going on. A question that comes to mind time and again is how such activities can be conducted when there are many students in the class if there is a large class. Rinchen, like we discussed in Happy Fingers, you again have to develop some strategies to work within these constraints. You can break the class into different groups and allot them different areas for nature walk. You can again take the help of your colleagues if they are free at that time. Thank you, Karma. And with that, we come to the end of today's radio talk on Happy Fingers and Let's Explore. Hope we were able to clear your doubts and questions about these two sections. Please keep in mind that we are teachers. The future of children lies in our hands. These are the children who will run our country and build our homes one day. We owe the depth of future to them. Thanks, Rinjan. That was very heartening. Dear teachers, be sure to tune in next week, same time, same place, same channel, where we will wind up the entire series. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.